Hey everybody and welcome back to Stitch Recreations. This is another 25th anniversary Pokemon Celebration collaboration doll. That's a bit of a mouthful. And this one's really special because I have got permission from Catherine of Delightful to do her male Vaporeon design. So I'm using this, um, I think he's called Holt Heath doll. Um, a bit disappointed his wrists aren't articulated, but never mind. Um, because he's got a nice blue body tone and I don't need to paint him or do too much to him. Um, he has got a couple of scratches on his face and um, you'll see them a bit better once I've got all the face off. Now his face has been removed with 100% acetone, I can take out his eyebrow piercing. Um, I try and cover that up later with some epoxy sculpt but it it didn't really do a very good job, so I've turned it into a feature on his face instead. Now, to get his moulded hair off, I'm dipping him in boiling water and leave him in there for a minute or so. And then, once I've got his head off, I can squish his head about and try and unpeel it. It was really quite difficult. I had to use bits of um, pliers and whatnot to try and get in there and ease it off, and I ended up having to use a scalpel to scrape away the bits that were attached really well glued on. If you're taking moulded hair off and you end up using a scalpel be really careful because you can destroy the head um, or cut yourself. Um, I know we heal but um, it's a bit disappointing when we spend ages taking a doll's hair off and you end up knackering the head in the process. Now I cannot express enough that I have got Catherine's permission to do her design. All the Vaporian designs I came up with either looked like um, a bad copy of her original designs for her Vaporeon Oh, and I just couldn't get away from looking the same in any way, shape or form. So watching her video again, I saw that she'd invited people to have a go at making the opposite gender for the ones that she'd made. In Catherine's design, he's wearing what looks like some kind of wetsuit. So I'm using this faux stretchy leather from iso for doll which um, is really nice to use actually, and sketch around his body to try and make a bit of a loose fitted wetsuit that I can tighten up on, on his form. I then realised that that wouldn't work, so back to the old cling film and masking tape trick where I shall wrap him up like a mummy, tape off his body and then draw the pattern on his body, cut the tape off and then make a pattern out of the tape that I've cut off in the various shapes. I hope that makes sense. Well, if it doesn't make sense, watch the video and hopefully that will make a bit more sense. And I'm only doing one side of the body because it can get flipped over and reversed to do the other side of the body, so half as much work for twice as much result. Now the pattern pieces are cut out, I can draw them onto the fabric a bit better and I'm a bit more confident on this fitting better. I've got a little dart in towards the chest because that's curved on the piece of paper and to curve it on the fabric you put a little dart in it. And then we flip it over and you've got the other side. Ta-da!
I've done the back in two pieces so that he can be sewn up at the back of the seam. putting it on his body it's quite baggy around the middle so I'm going to cut a chunk out of the back and sew him into his wetsuit. I'm using a ladder stitch to sew it up so you sew it in and out on one side and across and in and out on the other side so that when you pull it together it pulls it in evenly and it makes a very neat seam. Uh, people usually use this on stuffed toys and similar things so that they can put the stuffing in and leave a little gap for putting the stuffing in. Now I'm plotting out where I'm going to, uh, oh sorry, I'm just going to get your ears off here. Uh, you don't need those again, fins. Yeah? Okay, cool. Right. So yeah, we're plotting out where the fins on his head are going to go. Uh, make sure that the top one is as central as possible. And I'm going to put the fins over where his ears are. Um, looking back on it, I didn't actually have to cut his ears off because I could have just covered them in epoxy. But I guess it gave me a, a neater surface to start with. It's quite gruesome stabbing him in the head. Nice. Fun hobby, this one. Using Delightful's um, illustration as a reference, I'm trying to shape the wire armature that I've put in his head. Um, I think I might have used a bit of a heavy gauge wire because it's a bugger to up put in the right position and um, well, my fingers aren't strong enough so I had to use tools to twist it and wrap it in place. I repeated that on both sides and now he has got a trident head. Um, now the difficulty here is trying to get them bending the same way and looking even and not wonky like that. It kind of worked. It took some convincing and some epoxy and some stropping. It kind of got there. I've blended part A and part B of the epoxy together with gloves on and I'm sculpting without gloves on because I find it easier. I'm just doing a, an initial pass over the wires so that they are sealed into their position and then I can faff about with fancy fins and whatnot afterwards. Um, there's a few takes of me messing it up, starting again, messing it up, starting again, because I'm not used to working with epoxy, and it's like working with um, soggy chewing gum, and it gets harder the longer it's been uh, processed together. Um, I usually use milliput, uh, which starts off slightly firmer, but um, yeah, I did it in the end, I guess. The silicon tip tools that I'm using are from a local art shop. Um, they're advertised as 
being used for acrylic paint for use doing like big sculpty paintings but I find them useful for quite a few things including sculpting. And I tidy it up and smooth it out with a bit of water. This stuff's lots of fun to use. Um, Puriating at times, but it's good. It does what it, it needs to do. On Vaporeon's collar thing, um, he's got these two gemstones so I'm playing again with my resin mixing it with uh, silk paint which actually didn't, <laughs> it really didn't work um, so I'm putting some mica powder in as well to try and soak up the paint to mix it in better with the resin which seemed to have worked because uh, the blue paint that I used previously was not ideal in colour And then we give it a bit of a zap under the UV light and hopefully it'll set even with the liquid in the middle of it, which was a bit of a doofy thing for me to do. Now Vaporeon's horns, fin, fin horn things, um, have cured and they're nice and solid. I'm going to give them a buff with a nail buffer to make sure that there's no sticky outy bits and um, make sure it's a nice surface to put some more epoxy on to make the fins out of. Um, if you give it a bit of a buff, it gives it a bit more of a grip. Oh, look, the nail tool came out as well. I forgot about that. Um, it gives it a bit more grip for the other epoxy to grab to and adhere to. Now that they've all been sanded back to the shape that I wanted-ish, um, I'm making some flat bits of epoxy and making the fins. I started off trying to make the fins the right shape to start with, um, with the can't think of the scalloped edge, uh, but I ended up just buggering it up every time I touched it and it'd wave off. So I thought, sod it, I shall just put it all on in one big fin and then I can carve it out later on, which worked. So this is the most difficult bit, in my opinion. Uh, trying to make his really fancy uh, collar thing. So I'm doing what I did before, wrapping a body in cling film and masking tape, and then drawing the design onto it and cu cutting up the pieces. I really fiddly. I'm going to try and explain it the best I can because I got confused trying to make it and I ended up just bodging it together in the end. So I'm using the picture off screen as a reference to draw his collar thing on. There we go. Look, there it is. And uh, yeah, I'm going to cut each of one of those out and then each panel is going to be cut out on fabric and then sewn together because I like torturing myself like that.
So I've cut them all out and noted on them which is the back, which is the front, which is wherever, and I'm drawing them out with uh, it's a special pen that you can iron and the pigment comes out um, it evaporates in the heat which is pretty funky so drawing out the pattern pieces uh, my plan is to stitch them together so there's a little tiny bit of seam allowance but I have to number them because I haven't meant to... I've got it all mixed up and yeah there we go see look numbers makes it a bit better a bit more um, sequential no not really. After some faffing, I've realised that uh, it's too fiddly to go into the sewing machine, so I'm using a quick drying fabric glue, which was brilliant, except for when I stuck the wrong bits together. So despite numbering them and having them in the right place, it took me a couple of attempts to get it in the right order. Uh, so yeah, do better than I do. And then we have it, eventually. Uh, use my little iron and I'm going to iron off the numbers and the lines and the seams a bit so that it will sit better on his neck. The little iron things are advertised as a, a wax painting thing but um, it's really really good for doing tiny tiny things and uh, getting into tiny corners and crevices so for tiny doll stuff it's perfect. Now on the illustration it's got lines going down the collar so I'm using a grey thread and I'm going down each segment with oh it's blue and navy, blue and navy stitch because Now that's all done, I'm going to give it a little trim, clear up any leftover flyaway bits of stitch. I'm sorry, that's really out of focus. And uh, make sure that nothing falls out by turning over the top and gluing it down. Now that's all dry, I'm going to get some Mod Podge and to help it keep its shape and firm it up a bit, I'm going to give it a good going over with Mod Podge and it also means I can trim the ends and they're nice and clean. This is a different shape silicon tool doofy, it's really useful. So he's going on my model, Owen, and I'm just working out where the press stud's going to go on the back and then I'm going to coat it in the Mod Podge all over so that it, it will hold its shape and sit 
better on the shoulders. Now that's all dry, we're going to give them a trim and a bit of a tidy. And then we're going to put a fastening on the back. I'm using tiny press studs. Now he's all dry, I can put on his little gemstone decorations. Ta da! I'm quite pleased with that. It doesn't look too bad actually. <laughs> Back to the face and the moulds and the heads and the fins and everything else. I'm using a nail rotary tool thing from I got off Amazon. It's only about twenty pounds, I think. And it's really useful. Look at how cool that is, and it uh, shapes it up, and it means I can take off any dirty edges, make them all nice and polished. I gave it another go over with a nail buffer to give it a bit of tooth for painting and to smooth out any of the overlaps and the strange lumps and bumps you get from putting different layers on. Some more chalk. So my pastels are dying. <laughs> Oops. Um, oh dear. Um, mainly, mainly using blues for this and uh, trying to keep it as accurate as I can to Catherine's design, but I end up looking really grumpy. start off using pastels to give the face a bit more depth and shape. Uh, Holt's got a very similar, I think it might even be the same, mould as Jackson Jekyll. Uh, he's got a very square jaw, he's got a very um, angular face and I was trying to soften it up a bit because Catherine's design's got quite a soft face.
kind of sketch his eyes out with white and you can see where the scar, it's now a scar, where the dots were, where I've covered it up with the epoxy sculpt and it's still left a visible mark so I thought I'd beef him up a bit and make him look a bit more rugged with a scar in his eyebrow. Like with most of the darker faces, um, it's really hard to get the lighter colours to sit so I uh, decided to just go straight ahead and use the pigment off the pencil straight off. So I've wet the pencil, I've scribbled it onto my hand to make a little palette of white that I can pick up and re-moisten if it dries out. in the eyebrows with pencil and then I've resorted to going back to using the pigment straight off the pencil again because I've got some new tiny brushes and they're really really good and actually you get a bit more control and a bit more uh, of a finer detail when you use the tiny brushes um, so I actually use this most of the way through the face up I'm not sure how Catherine does it. She does the most amazing eyes. Uh, every time I do a male doll, he ends up little tiny squitty eyes. Um, I don't know. Wasn't particularly impressed with how his eyes turned out, but I suppose it makes him look a bit older and a bit more mature in a way.
his face is done, I'm going to paint his fins. I'm priming them with a coat of gesso and then I'm going to start painting. And while that's drying, I'm going to get some hair. I've got all the blues out of this. I'm going to use the darker blues at the base of his hair and work up to the lighter blues, blues? Lighter blues at the top of his head. <laughs> So I prepare yarn in a very lazy fashion. Um, I just get a clump of it, I brush it out, straighten it, and then brush it out again. And the more that you do that, the straighter the strands get. And it means that I don't have to sit and unwind it and tie it to things. And uh, I can just cut it off to the length that I want. And you can repeat that many times, and you get a whole variety of lengths. So I can't find my paint at the moment. So I'm using the only paint that I could find, which was a white, and I'm scraping in some pigment from the chalk pastels and mixing it through, and it surprisingly worked well. mixed in a, an ochre colour to make a cream for the base of the fins and then I've mixed two different blues so it's darker at the base and lighter at the tip of the fin. Um, interestingly the different colours that make up the various blues came out and gave the fins a really strange sort of ombre effect with the different purples and blues that were behind the pastels. Now, gluing the wefts on is a very simple procedure. You glue a line, start at the bottom, stick some on, glue on top of that, let it dry, and then work your way up. all his hair done, just need that to dry and then I can give him a trim. I nearly forgot his tail. He has a tail. So I've got some uh, more crafting wire to make an armature 
and using the same technique that Delightful used on her Vaporeon doll, I'm going to make him a tail. Um, this is actually my second attempt. My first one just looked like some horrible swamp foot. I draw out the shape of the tail that I want and I'm going to make some fins as well, which I will stick inside the wrong facing inside the seam so that I can flip it out afterwards. And this stuff's stretchy and uh, my sewing machine doesn't like very stretchy fabrics so I'm using the Fabri-Tac glue again and sticking it all down which worked really well. I'm going to make some little fins to go on the bottom and stuff those with some stuffing that I have and then stuff the tail, shove the wire in there and attach it to his bum. There we go, much better. Better than the original uh, swamp foot tail. But he's really useful to lie him on so I can put everything else on. Look at that. So, these are the bandagey things that uh, Catherine put on her the front of her, her Vaporeon doll. He's got them up the sides of his suit, so I'm using the same technique she used, which is to layer and cross over various bits of fabric like this, and I shall add definition with some pastels when it's all dry. Now both sides are done and they're drying, I'm going to paint on the two side panels. I got some paints at this point. It had been Christmas and I've got paints which was really happy. Um, I'm giving it a white base so that I can put some iridescent paint on that I've got which I thought added a nice bit of shimmer especially as he's got a shimmery tail because I couldn't find any fabric that was uh, close to his body colour that I had in stock. Just giving his hands a little blush here. to put the designs on his wetsuit.
that's done, I can put some brownie ochre colour on to the binding bits on the side of his wetsuit. I'm using um, the, it's a, an applicator for false eyelashes. I'm going to use that to go through so I can get a nice fine line where the seams are and do a bit of a blush over the top with the ochre colour so that it's the same colour as the design. Okay, I'm going to work on his hair. So using a toothbrush as a hairbrush, I'm going to wet it a bit, give it a brush through so it tries, well, I shall try and get it to sit where I want it to sit. Um, and then I'm going to use some scissors to snip it and trim it so that it's a bit more like the illustration. at cutting hair, you just ask my kids. <laughs> so tidied up and here are the final pictures. I just want to say thank you very much to Catherine from Delightful for allowing me to use her design and I'm sorry I butchered it um, but I had a lot of fun making him and I tried lots of different techniques and fiddly bits and pieces which is good fun so if you want to see some more of my stuff please go and have a look at the rest of my channel if you want to say anything have any comments or queries then please say so down in the comments below i look forward to seeing them goodbye